Okay, um, Christian Steiner and Martin Hoffmann. And um, okay, let me introduce the subject uh, briefly. Collector uh, So uh, you have uh, colloids or colloidal objects. Uh, sorry for this. Uh, you, it's difficult to see too much light from above. Um, and you see, uh, this is a very uh, often occurring situation. You have uh, polyacrylic acid, but if you are in biophysics, uh, you can use uh, DNA as an example, latex particles, uh, clay minerals, proteins. All these are polyacrylics. Now, um, you have highly charged objects and, uh, of course, the same number of counter ions. And uh, very often, people like to depict, for instance, DNA as just without counter ions. And I hope to convince you that you will make a mistake in this case. Um, it's very important to understand where are the counter ions. And uh, I will give a, a very important argument, which goes back to people like Wunsager in Menning. Uh, consider one counter ion here in some distance from the highly charged rod. So you have an interaction of the negatively charged counter ion with many positive Side. So we have a very strong uh, attraction. Uh, if this uh, counter ion would be far apart, it's uh, energy equilibrium of the order of KT. So there can't be any uh, uh, equilibrium. So what will happen? You will have uh, counter ion condensation. Uh, so most of the counter ions, in case of DNA, it's approximately 70%, will be closely correlated to the broad like macro ion. So uh, the broke ion near to the rod will only experience sort of a um, uh, effective charge and we uh, establish uh, an equilibrium again. So we have uh, counter ion condensation. But uh, the drawback of this kind of thing is um, that you have um, condensed or immobilized lots of counter ions. We are losing a lot of entropy. This is something but which is not uh, uh, favorable for Mother Nature. So whenever you, for instance, exchange three uh, monovalent counter ion by trivalent counter ion, you gain a lot of entropy. So you have to keep this uh, picture in mind. Now this is uh, maybe the case of uh, DNA or typical synthetic uh, polycolite like glycerin sulfonate. Now I would like to talk about these spherical polyelectrolyte brushes. We have long polyelectrolyte chains now attached to the surface of the uh, uh, colloidal Typically, these colloidal spheres are of the order of 100 nanometers in diameter. And what you see is that nearly 100% of the counter ions are now confined. So, virtually no counter ion, only a very small amount, and we'll give you numbers later on. Um, a couple of hundred of maybe two million can escape. So, you create a huge um, surplus of uh, counter ions, and this is, I think, very interesting physics to be pursued. Um, and uh, I will walk you through this through our recent uh, work on this. So these are our particles, again, uh, so-called silicon molecular brushes. The term brush means that the contour length, approximately 250 nanometers, it's much longer than the typical distance on the uh, sphere itself. So it's typically 2 to 6 nanometers, and the length of the chain, the contour length is 250 nanometers. So we are in really the brush limit. And um, so we worked a lot on these systems, and you might find all the details uh, on, on this paper. And um, uh, this gentleman here, the, of course, very known, the Pinkers, he came up with the idea that most of the counter ions are uh, localized. <coughs> so um, he, uh, in already in 91, worked out the basic theory um, on, uh, of these systems. So again, most of the counter ions are inside. So if you have, for instance, the overall dimension, so this is approximately uh, the length of this chain, uh, you can think of this as a large object, and this has an effective charge, but it's much smaller. It's only a fraction of the total charge, you know, the total charge of all these negative charges. Rather than giving you lengthy positions on how one could arrive, at this example, I give you a movie. I was very fortunate to have uh, Abu Yusufi, a theoretist, working in my group, and he uh, performed uh, MD simulations. Now let's see. So, and the nice thing 
theory is a little bit boring sometimes on the equations. Now we have a movie. So now they here you have this sphere, the collective brush, nothing has changed. They have thermal motion of the counter and everything is unchanged. But the nice by the theory is you can switch off, uh, switch on yeah, now, you switch on charges. And now you see uh, all these yellow counter eyes are desperately moving into the brush and um, much better than equations, I'm sorry to say, I'm a bloody chemist, so <laughs> I like this more than equations. Okay, um, but you see it's not equilibrium. Now the sun is shining in, so the sun obviously likes this movie too. Uh, okay, but I think you can see, uh, now it's getting better again, that most of the counter eyes are in, and what we see as well is that all these chains have been stretched to nearly full length. And this is of course a very simple idea. Uh, you create a huge osmotic pressure of the confined counter ions, and this is enough to stretch the chains uh, to full length. Typically, you get um, an osmotic pressure of the order of 0.1 <coughs> atmosphere, up to maybe one uh, atmosphere. So it's, it's really uh, a huge uh, effect. So this is what we have to keep in mind, and this will, of course, define the physics. The only important factor of the physics of this system is the osmotic pressure. Okay, so this is the uh, idea, so i simply summarize. Uh, so most of the counter ions are in, so we want to, to study the height of the brush. And, of course, uh, we want to now uh, do the next step and uh, find out how many numbers are outside. And, of course, this you can measure by directly measuring electrostatic repulsion. So we have a couple of counter ions coming out of this brush layer, and they create a net effective charge, as already discussed, and we can measure this and then uh, try to find out uh, how many counter ions are already away. So this is a menu of uh, the effective charge of these polypolar brushes. And um, so first of all, we need the relation between the pair potential and the correlation kinetics. Uh, this is the new idea, and uh, this has been done by Christian Schneider. And then, rather briefly, at the end of my talk, I will uh, a look into the electrophoretic mobility. And it's a very good thing to talk about in brief about these two subjects because they have been first tackled by uh, Maya Kolkowski. And um, so I think we should uh, give three cheers to the founder of modern soft metaphysics. I think these two gentlemen didn't know that they would do uh, soft metaphysics. But um, they were of all the, the um, uh, great previous pioneers of uh, uh, Brownian motion. And it's very interesting to read uh, the exchange of letters between these two gentlemen. I recommend the uh, biography of Einstein by Adam Thais. Uh, I think he was among the uh, biographers of Einstein who really understood the physics these guys were uh, talking about. And uh, it's very interesting. Uh, and Katsmolitsovsky uh, really did uh, the first decisive step in these two fields. Okay, so this is the idea. We want to see how strong is the interaction if one brush particle is banging with the other one. And um, first of all, I should uh, give you some ideas about the spherical brushes, kinetics of coagulation and particle potential. How does this, uh, uh, how is this related to each other? And finally, the electrophoretic probability. Now, in this end, this is a group of physicists. So um, I am not going to the, to, to the details of chemistry of our cuisine chimie. How are we making these particles? Uh, I only think it's a chemical procedure. You make a graft. You have a grafting problem. You polymerize these chains right on the surface. And it's a pity that the sun is shining so nicely. Uh, I should have done this yesterday. Um, uh, here is the cryotem. Uh, it's a transmission electron microscopic uh, picture. And you're supposed to see long chains attached to the surface, uh, so you can shock freeze water, and uh, water becomes uh, so-called hyperquenched uh, gassy water, and you can nicely see objects. I think this is the, maybe you can see it again. And what you see is that the hairs are stretched to full length, and this is the os strong osmotic pressure, and you can see this dry again. Of course, we did many other uh, methods uh, uh, to, to prove this, uh, but I think this is a very nice uh, picture. So we understand all the physics of this system, of these systems more well. And um, a very important point is, of course, uh, what is the length 
of the surface layer. Here you see, it's, uh, you can even see it from the picture, but you can measure this by dynamic light scattering very precisely. And uh, here, are the, the, in this case, the, the length, the full length was something like 200 something nanometers. And here you see the length, the, the stretching is nearly 180 or whatever nanometers in the salt resolution. Now if you have salt, uh, the, the, the has become shorter and shorter, so you go from the stretch to the coiled state of the polymers. And you expect, of course, uh, because if you add more and more salt, you are screening the Coulombic uh, potential. And um, then, uh, after all, at high salt concentration, you have an essence uncharged system. So you will come back uh, to the uncharged system. Now, what we discovered here, if you, if you took uh, magnesium or sulfate, uh, that the uh, collapse of the chains were much more pronounced. And at this point, uh, the data stopped, not because the student was lazy, uh, because uh, here the uh, particles uh, precipitate. And that's an um, interesting point. And we studied this in more detail by using trivalent counter ions. So we took lanthanum counter ions. And now you may ask me how you get to the idea to use lanthanum. And um, I once visited Argonne National Lab and I talked to one uh, old colleague who was one of the remnants of the radiochemistry. So he was uh, one of the guys um, to, in charge of uh, nuclear waste. And he told me, well, uh, if you want uh, to you know, understand the chemistry of plutonium, we and others uh, have no intention to work with plutonium more than we need to do, but uh, it's a good thing uh, not to forget the actinides, take the lanthanides, take lanthanum, and you can do lots of interesting things. And I thought, oh, this is G, this is nice idea. Um, and we did this, and then we made an experiment, a very simple experiment. We took mixtures of lanthanum chloride and sodium chloride, and we mixed them in a way that the ionic strengths are remains constant. So uh, the, uh, the bilens is a constant in all these cases uh, as expressed uh, by the ionic strength. But here you see uh, we have a collapse, we add more and more lanthanum and uh, we have a collapse of the surface layer. Even more you have a correlation. And uh, this is of course uh, a very clear deviation from all kinds of mean field arguments and this is interesting and we will pursue this in a minute. And the uh, explanation is very simple. I was uh, presenting you the strongly confined counter ions. So you create a huge unfavorable osmotic pressure. Now you kick out three sodium ions and you replace them by one lanthanum ion. So you keep electroneutrality, everything is okay. But you, you liberate, in essence, two ions, so you, need, you get a huge uh, increase of entropy. And this is a very strong effect. Uh, we show that you can gather lanthanum ions uh, against the gradient of 10 to the power of 6. So it's a huge effect. Entropy uh, wins the game, of course. And um, then you observe a collapse of the uh, black light shell and cross-linking. So finally, you have uh, replaced all the sodium ions from the surface layer, and of course these uh, trivalent ions, I hope you can see it, uh, are sort of stitching together uh, these, these chains. Uh, and there is clear that you have uh, then um, a, a strong interaction. Now this is very important uh, is to see again in a movie, uh, again, done by Arm Yusufi. Um, here you see we just took, we took a very similar simulation, but we took away all the other chains. You see only two chains. You see the monovalent counter ions are still roaming around, but these are the red guys, the trivalent counter ions, they are only slide along the chains. So you immobilize nearly totally the trivalent ions. And uh, you, the only the uh, monovalent ions can uh, build up osmotic pressure. So it's a huge difference if you go from the monovalent situation to the trivalent situation. Uh, all the osmotic pressure is gone. And uh, if you uh, uh, 
are interested uh, in uh, more details, you can find this in, in our paper from 2006. So uh, we are not only having nice movies, but the full and evaluation. So, okay. Doesn't work. Aha. Uh -huh. What is this? Oh, ha ha. Okay. Okay, this can be put into quantitative uh, considerations. Um, Abizuki set up a so called Haller Alexander Dijen model. It's a very simplistic model, but it works quite fine. And then he could uh, calculate this in terms of a Donnan equilibrium. Uh, between the mono and the trivalent ion, and you see that even uh, at small ions, concentration of the lens uh, practically all trivalent ions are sucked into the brush on the expense of the monovalent ions. So then we could model this uh, collapse of the brush layer very nicely in a similar quantitative fashion. And then, of course, uh, you have, if you look into the surface, then if two particles are touching each other, they will be sort of cross-linked and uh, coagulated. But if they are separated uh, by some distance, they only elect, uh, interact by an electrostatic effect. And this we want to measure. But if they put, uh, are put together, uh, the, um, we have a bridging because of these triangular ions. So once the uh, particles have been stuck together, they will remain uh, stuck. Now, if you in general are interested in measuring potentials, uh, of course then we have the Fermi's uh, surface uh, uh, potential apparatus, surface force apparatus by Israel Navi and others. Uh, and this is of course uh, a classical um, piece of uh, colloid physics. Um, of course, what we want to know is the interaction between two particles. So if we have microscopic brushes, uh, then uh, this has been done by Matt Turell and Jacob Klein and others. You find nicely <coughs> these uh, repulsing, the repulsion between uh, two brush layers uh, on a microscopic scale. But it's not possible to do this on a, uh, a, a microscopic scale between two particles. And uh, uh, the problem was uh, we, we took the same experiment in the presence of triangular ions. Uh, this has been done by Matt Durell uh, and his student Rob Marina, and um, he found that the, in, in the presence again of lanthanum ions, um, it's a very weak repulsive force. So it's hardly be measured by, um, the, um, by the surface forces apparatus, uh, and uh, if these two uh, surfaces come together, they stick together like crazy, and you have to re re uh, they, they jump into contact and uh, uh, you can't use it anymore. But a very important point is, uh, as expected, you can fit the weak <coughs> electrostatic repulsion by an exponential. And this is what theory predicts. Uh, and indeed, uh, within the experimental error, uh, we find that this uh, is um, the case in the deep. And now, what we would need between uh, two particles would be a micro surface force balance. So we should have a microscopic and nanoscopic apparatus between these two particles measuring the force. We don't have it, but we can do the following. We can um, measure this weak repulsion, so the potential looks like this. So once the particles are stuck, um, the, uh, they really are, are stuck, so this is a very deep first minimum. Uh, but you have a weak, so maximum repulsion is here. And now, um, the particles, if they want to approach each other by thermal motion, they have to overcome this mountain. So this is Vmax, so the maximum potential here. And uh, the higher this mountain, the more time is needed uh, to come, uh, to overcome it. And then, we took the idea, this was theory already developed by Smolijowski many, nearly 100 years ago. So we see the uh, instabilities of the particles, the repulsion between the particles very weak. So we now watch the particles coagulate 
but we only look into the very early stage. Exactly, we look into the first stage where the monomers form dimers by a sensitive technique, and we watch the kinetics. So uh, this is a classic old, old expression. We look how the particles, the monomers, are vanishing to form dimers, and the constant k11 can be calculated exactly uh, by a simple argument. Again, going back to Molinowski, what you are doing is you, you calculate the flux of the particles through this uh, dashed line, and then you get the famous result that k11, so the binary array constant of binary uh, collisions, is independent of the size of the particles. This was really a baffling conclusion, conclusion and, but this is uh, well born out of experiments. Uh, and you can measure this uh, kinetics. This is, of course, a certain limiting case. This is a diffusion limited colloidal aggregation. There is no repulsive force anymore. Um, now, if you want to put in this uh, 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 repulsive force, you have a uh, uh, sort of uh, another constant. And then you could take the ratio of the two kinetic constants, <coughs> namely the kinetic constant of the fast coagulation, uh, only limited by diffusion, and then this so-called reaction limited colloidal aggregation as uh, so, and then you get the potential in this equation, in this interval. So uh, you come up with this very simple equation which uh, contains right the integral. Now we know that this is an exponential. So we could put in this, and the only parameter we have is the maximum repulsive force uh, to overcome uh, by the particles, and this we can get from the experiment. So we will uh, determine this so-called stability ratio W, which is again the ratio of the fast and the slow calculation. So it's a very simple idea, and this idea has been used uh, to put in some potential like the DLBO potential, and to check whether this are the kinetic constants you calculate and the stability ratio is okay. We reverse the argument. We, we believe, or we have good reasons, uh, and measure directly the uh, type of repulsion, and now we use calculation kinetics to find out about the potential. So we sort of reverse uh, the whole argument and now determine a very weak repulsion uh, from calculation kinetics. And there's a very simple thing. This is the most sensitive method because the lower limit of the uh, interparticular potential is kT, and you can't have less. So uh, this is the limiting factor. Now, um, the method how to measure the formation of dimers, uh, this already has been worked out by Volkowitz and, and co-workers many years ago. By dynamic light pattern, you measure the uh, increase of the hydrodynamic radius you make from monomers, you make dimers, so they have a high, bigger hydrodynamic radius. Uh, at the same time, when you measure at 90 degrees angle, uh, the uh, dimers have minimum scattering function, so you put everything uh, together. Um, the, uh, I think I skipped this detail. So, this, what the, the, the message of this picture is you measure K11, and you see here. <laughs> As a, the parameter here is a soil concentration. You start out with minus soil concentration, and uh, the slope of this curve is simply K11. It's very simple. And then you see if you go from 0.5 millimolar to 150 millimolar, there's virtually no, 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 no change anymore. This means you are already reached, you have reached the diffusion limited case. You give in more salt, uh, but it doesn't help. So diffusion is now limiting all the kinetics. So, then, from these numbers, we calculate the stability ratio, and we are really proud of these results, because they give you a sort of a classical picture of the whole thing. Um, first of all, uh, you have the diffusion-limited regime. You can give in, put in more salt, it doesn't help. The diffusion uh, of the particles to each other, uh, towards each other, is the limiting factor. But then you have critical calculation concentration, and then, uh, if you use less salt, the uh, uh, mountain to overcome uh, becomes bigger and bigger, so the correlation becomes slower and slower. Here in the final state, uh, the particles 
are um, coagulating by a factor of 1,000 slower than the diffusion limited case. So this is a, a double logarithmic diagram. So you can go over this the stability ratio for three orders of magnitude and explore very precisely uh, the um, uh, repulsive force. I come to this slide in a minute. Now we have, of course, analyzed this in very detail. Uh, this Vmax, uh, this is equal to A, um, is this maximum uh, potential, uh, R is the distance, uh, 2 R is the, the radius, uh, and delta is uh, the distance between uh, the two uh, surfaces, uh, and uh, we can analyze this, uh, and relate it to the surface potential. And uh, to make a long story short, we have precise measurements of the stability ratio. We can infer this Vmax uh, from these data and uh, extract the, maybe I'll go back, uh, the maximum mountain you know, to overcome by thermal motion. We can calculate very precisely uh, here uh, from the stability ratio. So it's not the way that we check the potential, but we get out the potential from these measurements. Now, then uh, Mizuki did one more step. He modeled these stated molecular brushes. Remember, most of the counter ions are confined, some arrayed. So we put the whole thing in a so called Wigner side cell and um, we measure the effective charge because the whole thing has a finite effective charge because some counter ions can await. Um, and then you do the uh, calculation if you are interested in the detail uh, of the theory. Uh, you can uh, look it up in this paper. Uh, in a self-consistent manner, uh, you get uh, the uh, effective charge and the height of the surface layer. And then you can calculate, calculate uh, the effective uh, potential and the maximum effective of the, of the potential of the number A. And here you see, uh, again, A, this is taken, has been taken, A is taken out of, directly out of the stability ratio measurements. So it's a very simple number. A means, in, in units of KT, means um, uh, the particle, the maximum uh, repulsion to overcome is of the order of maybe 5 KT, uh, 9 KT, or of the order of KT. So you can measure this very precisely, and this is virtually not possible by any other technique uh, the optical tweezers have been mentioned, but optical tweezers require very large particles and, um, and most of the other methods on the market right now uh, require much larger particles. So we can measure for small 100 nanometer big particles uh, the repulsive force and the solid line is what we get from theory from this very simple Alexander de Gennes model uh, with an adjustable parameter and well, it's not so bad. If we assume that we have 25% uh, uh, more uh, charges uh, coming out, then we get this dashed line. But I think for uh, theory, which works without uh, adjusted parameters, it's pretty good. Okay, so this is uh, the sort of summing up. Uh, so we have a theoretical curve. We, we can calculate the stability ratio uh, and the factor A. And uh, uh, I should express the fact that we have no adjustable parameters. And uh, maybe one more important point. This is the effective charge per particle. It's of the order of 500 to 600. The original number of charges on the whole particle is 2 million or something. So um, the trivalent ions bring it back to a very small number, first of all, and only a small number is case. So theory is capable of calculating the very small number, at least the order of magnitude, coming out of the brush layer. And I think this is quite a successful uh, theory given these facts. So this is again a survey of our method. Uh, we determine experimental stability ratio. From this, we get in a straightforward or, or manner the integral. Uh, we can calculate by a well-known procedure the effective surface potential. This gives us the effective surface charge density uh, and the effective charge per particle, and um, then we can go back and calculate the stability ratio. So this works quite fine. So we then thought 
if we have solved this problem, why don't we take the second Smolotovsky problem, namely the electrophoretic mobility. Uh, by the way, if you buy um, a Cedar sizer, you can, from Bokrelik or some company, you buy a Cedar sizer, there is a software in it, it always calculates the Smolotovsky uh, limiting case. It shouldn't do this, uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's only valid for a certain case. So uh, it's really one of uh, his problems. So again, we have these little molecular apparatus. Now, we say this is a hydrodynamic radius, which we can measure by dynamic light scattering. Again, a couple of counter ions can rate. They create a small but finite effective charge. Now, we, we can calculate this. I did this. I showed it uh, on the last slide. But now we can calculate or we can measure the mobility in the electric field. And this is directly related to the so-called zeta potential. So this is the uh, surface potential right at the shear plane. And what we did is simply identify the shear plane with the radius, with the, uh, with the sphere, defined by the hydrodynamic radius, which I think is a sensible assumption. And now what we can do is we have the uh, theoretical surface potential, which we just got from the previous calculation. And we have the zeta potential, which we can measure. We have the hydrodynamic radius by dynamic light scattering. Uh, so we have everything, and we can one, put one thing on top of another. OK. So here, again, uh, this is the electrophoretic mobility. Now we took europium, uh, as it's more or less the same as lanthanum. Uh, europium is a little bit more interesting because it's uh, strongly fluorescent. But it's, otherwise, it's simply trivalent pair counter. So it's very small uh, European uh, uh, concentrations. You see there's a strong negative electrophoretic mobility because these particles are having effective net, uh, negative charge. But a few, uh, you raise the concentration a little bit and then you sort of sucking in the trivalent ion, the monovalent ions come out. But remember the movie I showed you, all the trivalent ions are sitting right on the, uh, on the electrolyte chains and neutralizing their charge. So uh, what we do is, with the europium, as in the previous case with the lanthanum, you are titrating off the charge. And finally, it's nearly uncharged. And this is no wonder that the nearly uncharged particles is not uh, stable. And in the same way, uh, you see that the hydrogen radius are there, is, is collapsing. So the chains are coming from stretch down to the coil state. And you see, this collapse is most pronounced when uh, most of the uh, monovalent counter ions are gone, so when, you, uh, when most of the charge is gone. Now you can do the calculation. I make a long story short. Um, I only say uh, that the electrophoretic mobility is one of the, of course, the charge colloids, is one of the classical uh, subjects of uh, colloid science. Um, and you, but you can see that the reduced electrophoretic mobility uh, and the reduced theta potential uh, work uh, sort of in parallel. And this is the, again, this is the measured theta potential, and this is what we calculate from the previous model. So again, uh, it's a good agreement, and I should give everything together in one part. This is the surface potential. This we calculated from the correlation kinetics. This we now calculated from the electrophoretic mobility. Uh, the coagulation kinetic works uh, in the weakly charged regime, where you have lots of lanthanum in, inside. Here uh, you see this is a very strong transition by the replacement of the trivalent by the monovalent counter ions, but you see the theory works very nicely. Okay, let me come back to the channel and it looks a little dangerous, he will chase me away in a minute. Okay, I hope this is interesting. Not only liquid crystals are interesting, molecularized as well. Confinement is a drastic effect. It's an interesting uh, physics. Uh, we can calculate the repulsive interaction by our micro surface forces apparatus. Uh, and the surface potential is a peak of the zeta potential for the hydrodynamic radius and can be calculated from these measurements. Okay, let me first thank uh, Christian Schneider. This is a gentleman in the middle. Martin Hoffman is there, and he was helped with the light scattering experiment by Margaret Lee Alpov. Uh, we were benefiting from quite a number of discussions with uh, Phil Pinkers. We should not forget famous uh, gentleman here. And finally, I thank you for your invitation.
So it's not the classical DLBO problem. This has been checked by the 